Hey guys, what is going on? This is Cyber coming to you with some more Red Alert 3 because it's awesome. You know what else is awesome? Freaking Green Zero hitting 200 video commentaries. Kane's Wrath, of course, go and check that out. Green Zero, a freaking boss at commentating. And you know what is also pretty boss? This game, actually, I don't know for sure. This could be a really terrible game. Anyways, we are going to be having Joel's as the, as the Cyan Empire and as the Yellow Soviets in the bottom of Snowplow. We are going to be having Tingu. I'm freaking freaking jacked for uh, really no reason. I'm actually about to head out in, well, I say about in like six hours. I'm going to head out, fly up to uh, North Carolina, hang out with some friends for Thanksgiving because it's cheaper than flying to uh, back to where I live. But I'm like freaking jacked for no reason at all, and this audio is probably going to be spiking like crazy. Anyways, we're going to be seeing a couple of dojos p followed up by two refs out of Joel's, and also two refs, no, just one ref right there, just now throwing down that second ref out of dual barracks is exactly why that ref took so long, but it will be an insane amount of infantry production capabilities out of Tingu, and Tingu, of course, going to be the Soviets. I don't even remember if I said that. You've probably figured it out. Oh, yeah. I forgot I forgot. I even put, like, the nameplates up there sometimes. Interestingly enough, Joel's actually selling off his dojo, which I don't know if that's a good idea just because of uh, Tingu going that dual barracks. He did sell off that barracks, so he's not looking to push the infantry that much, but he does have infantry spread out all the way across the map. Like, I'm just going to switch. I'm going to switch it. Look at that. Look at that vision out of... Although Joel's is doing pretty good too. Uh, that vision out of Tingo, he's actually doing pretty good. He will be able to clear that structure just like that. So that uh, infin infinity, that Imperial Warrior, I was going to say like Infinity Warrior, which would actually, maybe that's the name of a game. Is that a game? That might be awesome, but that might be stupid. Anyways, it looks like this engineer going to try and outrun the bears. Turns out bears can run 35 miles an hour. Just kidding, because they're not actually going to be giving chase. Because... I have no idea why. Tingo's just probably did not actually see that engineer, but did whatever happened to that dragon, that burst drone? I don't even know. I wasn't even, like, paying attention. That's awful. Engineer going to be running across the map, and we are now going to be up to Tingo's, but are there... No, there are currently no bullfrogs out on the map, just a single terror drone, which could hop inside of that Tango, take it down, but instead going to be going for that super reactor. Now that... Actually, that Tango's probably screwed anyway, because, hey... You want to hop into the air, you'll get a bullfrog shot into the face. And grabbing this structure over here actually going to be pretty good scouting information for Joel's. Joel's going to be throwing down yet another dojo core, running over that bear, denying that scouting just a little bit. And that terror drone still chilling over here, and both of these players most likely going to be expanding and looking to take their third bases right here. Going to be seeing the refinery out of... Joel's and Tingu actually going to be heading over here for his third base. A little bit unusual. This one usually a little bit easier to take. Not necessarily easier to hold, but easier to take just because it is a little bit closer. Sometimes they do send out Sputniks over here just because, hey, you know, naval units are not all that pre prevalent on these maps. But you would not expect... I mean, this is it's not like this is a strange thing to do. It's just slightly unusual. At least in the recent games that I've seen, we're going to be seeing hammer tanks out of Joel's... Or no... <laughs> Not out of Joel's, out of Tingu. On the other hand, we are not going to be... Net great, now I don't even know what the players' names are. Tingu is not going to be building Tangus. Rather, he's going to be building Bullfrogs. Both of these players, of course, up to that Tier 2. And I do believe that Tier 2 was spotted a while ago by... Uh, by that Tengu out of, not Tengu, but out of Joel's, and actually a Terra Drone going to be camping that dojo, and then will it get sniped by the VX? Yes, no, maybe so, can't really tell, it will escape off to the waters, and that is probably, uh, it's, it's such a tough call to make, because do you try and chase that down with something like a Chopper VX? You really shouldn't, just because Chopper VX really needs to be serving a purpose somewhere else, maybe sniping a building, maybe being in your army and just adding that much more force into your army. But at the same time, Terra Drones, super annoying, and if you do not take them out, yes, they will come back to absolutely own your Harvesters, or at least that's what they do to me. Up to three bases, or rather three ore nodes for both of these players, and then camping out over here, a sudden transport. Does he actually have anything in there? Probably, but could be just a scouting sudden transport, because, you know, that's super common. Scouting sudden transport. That would just like, no, you don't want to be able to defend yourself as a scout. That's silly. Going to be running around with this Chopper VX, deciding to actually not go for that building. He's going to let instead the uh, Tsunami Tanks, which is kind of strange because it's pretty obvious that that Striker VX was completely safe from those units. 
Instead, Hammer Tank's going to be firing through the cliff because, you know, cliffs don't really matter, and instead he is going to be going to try and take out those Hammer Tanks. Just kidding, he's turning around as the Bullfrogs roll into view. Actually, I don't even know if he had view of that. That was quite a ways away. Twin Blades are now going to be out. Is he going to be going for any MiGs? I would not be surprised to see one or two MiGs just to allow a little bit easier uh, air control because, hey, Bullfrog's pretty good. They are a little bit slow there. And when you've got mass amounts of Tangus, which I'm, just, I'm kind of surprised that we've only seen a few Tangus out of Joel's. Joel's going to be going for a fourth expansion. Neither of these players being very aggressive at all, which is kind of strange out of a player like... Uh, don't even remember the names now out of Tingu because Tingu of course cannot expand quite as easily but both of these players now going to be on basically matching expansions but matching even in their position four and four are going to be the counts for these players and I'm really kind of surprised that Tingu or Joel's has not taken that fifth base he's just been expanding well I would say like crazy but in this game it is the norm going to be taking some Tangus and spreading them around the map of course super annoying to have happen almost as annoying as Terror Drones, but Terror Drones a little bit more difficult to deal with most of the time. Terror Drone going to be grabbing that Tangu and locking it down, just kidding, because the Tangu was able to take it out. Tangu needs to fly out of there to the east, and he does, in fact, and Hammer Tanks. Look at that, Bullfrogs being split up. Would have been kind of annoying, but oh, MIGs are here and here to own those Tangus, crashing them down into the water. Tangu, on the other hand, going to be escaping on the left, so able to save one out of three Tangus, and on the other hand, he did absolutely nothing, but the Imperial Warrior, not the Imperial Warrior, the Shinobi has been spotted. Will he grab that harvester or that refinery? Yes, no, maybe so. Yes, he does, in fact, infest that, infest, infiltrate, rather, and the Hammer Tank's going to most likely be going for this expansion, and Tangu, or Joel's, what are you going to be doing about this? Because you absolutely need to do something about that, or sell it off right now. Sell it, get a dollar. No, he does not sell it, gets no cash back for that. Does save the Harvester, so, you know, add that to your army, and then you can conquer the world, because everyone knows Harvesters are so good. Which, I'm, I think I've already mentioned this, but that's what I did in this one multiplayer game. I was totally, I got totally owned. I just got beat straight up. And so I just started building harvesters because I had like one refinery left. And I was going to sell it and just leave the game. And I was like, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make like a million harvesters. I made like six and then they all got taken out and completely crushed. Oh, trying to grab with an engineer. So that's what that sudden transport was for. Where the heck on the other side... And just Chopper VX chilling out over there. I think I've told that story before, but hey, you know, repeat stories are always good until you tell them so much that everyone hates you. Which, uh, you know, I I'm pretty sure everyone watching this probably has a friend like that where they just tell that same story. It's like the one cool thing that happened to them, and they're like, yo, this one time, it was this cool thing. Really cool. And everyone's heard it 400 times. Don't be that guy which is to say that I'm probably that guy. And the Chopper VX is going to be spotted by that MiG and gets completely taken out going, just throwing those units away. Not good for Joel's, and Joel's looking to have a fairly decent-sized army, although have that has a satellite drop cooled down yet? That could be what May or Tingu is going to be waiting for. I am not entirely sure on the edge of my seat, just as this tension builds. And, uh, yeah, nothing's really going to be happening. Instead, going to be waiting for those point defense drones before I'm assuming he engages. Otherwise, he could just let the point defense drones clock out and trying to use his, uh, leech beams. Not a bad idea. At least sapping some of that life off of those point defense drones. Not a bad idea at all. Of course, the leech beam has, like, twice the range of the cannon, although it probably doesn't actually. And leading with a couple of units, of course, Empire units, not really all that tough until you get into those King Onis. But, I mean, a lot of these lower-tier units compared to the Hammer Tanks, not quite as tough. Of course, they tend to be a little bit faster. But Hammer Tanks is just going to be taking some pot shots. And Tank Busters, of course, with that Tank Buster Micro, you can jump around Hammer Tanks all day. But going to be sniping yet another or Oil Derrick. So, actually, grabbing both of those Oil Derricks early on gave uh, Joel's at least a slight economic advantage. I didn't even mention that. But he was able to grab both of those at some point in the game. And he is not going to be doing too bad of a job in this game. Of course, not actually able to do too much damage with this ore collector. And are we going to be seeing that another bullfrog uh, terror drone combo? No, instead, just going to be sending a couple of hammer tanks to each of these locations. And, of course, switching 
those harvesters over. I would not be surprised to see Joel's just engage right here while Tingu is off over here, kind of micromanaging and paying attention over here. Going to be doing a little bit of splash damage, unwanted splash damage to his uh, orc collector and going to be running away from those hammer tanks. And no, just saw the army rearranging. I was like, yes, something's happening. No, just kidding. At the front, life is still going to be pretty dull despite the fact that there's like 10,000 units directly across from each other. And they're just kind of like, uh, uh, shoot, what's that movie? All Quiet on the Western Front, for those of you who have seen that. Probably no one, because unless you took, like, history in the seventh grade, you probably haven't seen that movie in America, specifically. Anywhere and anywhere else, who would have never seen that movie. And I believe in one of those scenes, it's like World War I base, and it's just these two lines of trenches, and guys are like 20 feet away. And they're like, hey, hey, we're going to go shoot each other after Christmas, because that's what we do. Three Twin Blades going to be taking out that oil there, completely eliminating the slight economic advantage that was held by uh, Joel's, of course, minus the, minus the harvesters, minus the refineries, because we still are going to be on three versus four, actually five expansion over here, that ore node getting taken, but Eureka is here to save the day for Joel's, and Joel's, of course, going to be able to take out basically everything from... Uh, this could actually just force a base race because there isn't a whole lot over here. Oh, three Twin Blades. Will it be enough? I am not entirely sure. One Twin Blade will go instantly down, not even doing damage to that building. And then Eureka hops on in there and, you know, just kind of chills, waits, and then pops right back out. Oh, down to half health already. That is not good signs for Eureka. With three Twin Blades, he will most definitely be able to take her out. Absolutely no problem. Would not be surprised to see him try and snipe her, and instead going to be scouting with the ore collector, so not actually using it in the main of his army. And the wave force artillery, yes, that is what you need to break to break a blockade. Just kidding, because Bears leading the charge, going to be taking out a couple of tank busters, weakening the anti in or the anti armor faction of this uh, Empire army from Joel's, and instead <laughs> that harvester actually making it into the middle of um, Tingu's base and able to do some damage to that harvester to Joel's harvester excuse me, to Tingu's Harvester began before getting taken out by the uh, Twin Blades and actually going to be trying to destroy the bridge with, with Eureka on it. Oh, and he does get it actually able to destroy that bridge with Eureka on it and basically completely negate that Eureka without losing an additional hammerhead because he would have lost those two hammerheads for sure. And he is going to be moving forward. This is really going to be it for Joel's. He's going to have to really do some serious damage here to try and even up the economic standing because now with Tingu on five bases, I have no idea why he hasn't engaged at this point just because he's got such an economic economic lead, and I'm really surprised that uh, Tingu hasn't actually taken that fifth base, or rather a fourth ore node at this point, but once again going for Eureka, and he's probably just going to send her probably down through there and then over and across, but instead going to be dropping some infantry into the middle of that army, not a bad idea, oh, was only able to take down a couple of infantry and just lock down some Imperial Warriors, which is not good, locking down a King Oni and completely owning it, that is how you max that is how you mix your units, not max necessarily, but Natasha is now here locking down that uh, King Oni with a terror drone and then taking it out with the remainder of his army. And if he can get a couple of launches off, that will be pretty good with those V4s. He is going to be using just the regular warheads. Nope, going to be using those splitting warheads, not actually able to do any damage, but they look kind of cool. So you get points for that looking cool, but also getting points is going to be those Rocket Angels, which are absolutely insane in kind of big numbers, and if you're someone who can micro very well, unlike me, because if you can micro, you can lock down units and take them out all day, and it's super annoying, but going to be launching a couple more V-Head Warheads, and the Bull Rush from the King Oni doing almost nothing, using that, uh, the Telsa Trooper's secondary ability at just the right time, Yuriko not really doing a whole lot, getting sniped right there, and coming in from over here will be that satellites and just in the middle of this battle just rolling everything forward away force artillery getting sniped by Natasha and then being reclaimed by Joel's and tons of hammer tanks getting taken out all over the tank busters definitely doing their part and serving the army and the couple of chopper VX is going to be keeping the twin blades at bay and I think that I have no idea who's really going to win with the addition of these bears and a couple of more apocalypse tanks rolling up from behind this should be able to be taken out by Joel's he should be able to clean everything up unless he loses all of his chopper VX which he may very well do to this single twin blade and now he has 
nothing to really deal with these apocalypse tanks i thought he could hold on for another second there with this wave force artillery and no he does have two king onis flow so the battle of the tier three tanks going to be needing to pack this guy back up until he can really deal with that wave force artillery he is going to do absolutely nothing able to snipe it with the twin blades yes and actually micro and his twin blades around that single chopper vix just uh do it take a little bit less damage oh goodness right there clicking away out of Red Alert 3, I don't actually know if that showed up on the recording or not, but a couple of bullfrogs, or rather one bullfrog, two apocalypse tanks, and it looks like it is going to be four bears. Oh, hey. There we go. Turn on health bars for those of you who like them. Going to be putting those on for the big battle we just witnessed so you can actually see the health because that's a good thing to have. However, it's super annoying with, like, bridges where all of the segments of health show up, but some of you do enjoy those health bars. I try and remember to turn them on. Of course, I never actually do remember, but I try to remember, and then I completely fail, and some people really don't like that. But a couple of Twin Blades, one of them, of course, going to be at that epic status, and Natasha is once again out. I don't actually know if she got taken out. I think she did. And those bears actually kind of absurd right now. Four bears, three of them going to be hey, having veteran status of some kind, and of course, one of them is just kind of the loser bear who went into battle. He went into the same exact battle as everyone else, but didn't get promoted at all, which is just kind of like, eh, you know. Badger Bomber going to be dropping those toxins on top of that one single wave force artillery and can the wave force artillery actually do anything and natasha not actually able to take anything out she did get sniped right there by i believe that wave force artillery and the king oni instead going to be how did i don't even know what just happened there king oni actually going to be changing sides and then the migs do go ahead and clean up that single chopper vx and this i think is going to be it for joel so not a whole lot of action in the beginning but a couple of pretty awesome battles in kind of the mid to well the late game i mean this late game no no denying that it is going to be king oni going down and bears turns out not very good at shooting wave force artillery but wave force artillery pretty good at taking out tier three tanks and yet another apocalypse tank going to be moving to the front but twin blades going to be sniping this expansion over here so good on tingu showing up with units and just sniping expansions all over the place, taking down two expansions. He's still sitting on those five ore nodes, taking out this bridge, actually took a lot of pressure off of that ore node on the right. And once again, a third Natasha now going to be out. And once again, going to be taking, well, not once again, but going to be taking out an expansion and eliminating nearly all of the MiGs. All of them do go down, so three MiGs are out, which means air superiority could in fact swing no just kidding because he only has two chopper vxs or rather two striker vxs since they are currently walking wave force artillery may have overextended itself and natasha is going to do absolutely yes she is actually going to snipe the driver out of that wave force artillery and will he be able to grab it before no it does look like joel's going to be able to grab it with a tank hunter instead of that conscript jumping in there and forcing it to change sides he's like hey you may be empire tech but now you belong to the motherland and stuff like that wasn't even going to try the Russian accent because, you know, reasons. And oh, actually going to be dropping satellites, but it does look like instead of dropping satellites on that MCV, they are actually going to be dropping into the water and disappearing because pollution sucks. So the CNC devs were like, you know what, we're going to help pollution, no debris. Stuff hits the water and just instantly disintegrates. And it is going to be not a whole lot left out of Joel's. I think that Tingu will be able to take this game, but... Do not fear, Joel's micro is not too bad. It's pretty good, in fact, but Dreadnought's also pretty good because, you know, V4's on land, just not enough. He had to spend money on a naval yard just for those, just for those, uh, Dreadnoughts. He might even decide to send it all the way around to the side and actually, well, to the top of the map and going to be s actually sending in conscripts. I'm guessing that's just to be uh, cannon fodder and just to kind of hopefully distract from these other targets which are now going to be rolling up and instead apocalypse tanks does do get sniped from those two wave force artilleries fu two fully charged shots will of course take that out and with proper micro you can snipe quite a few infantry even tesla troopers going to be taking out one of those chopper vx's but oh why did you do that joel's actually going to be able to possibly snipe any units coming out of that barracks but they probably all got canceled if any were building but, uh, Tingu, why in the world did you drop those toxins directly onto your own troops? I know you were trying to hit all of, or, Tingu, Tingu, why were you, he was trying to hit Joel's. 
messed up the names. Again, Terra Drone going to be camping this expansion over here just to make sure that it does not get taken. And are we going to be seeing a re-expansion? Yes, we are by Joel's. He's trying to get back onto those three bases. And somehow, despite the huge economic advantage, Tinko has not been able to close out this game. Now sitting with two uh, Dreadnoughts just chilling over here. And stop freaking out, Mouse. Stop it. And the single... Single V4 actually probably going to be going to this high ground over here to try and abuse it and rain fire down upon Joel's base. Is he going to be able to do it and how long will it last? Because anything that runs over here, well, actually, you probably can't skirt the dreadnought fire by keeping close to the cliffs. This V4 probably will not last too long, but still, the base for Joel's not looking too good. And the Wave Force artillery actually able to snipe. I'm not sure what that was. I'm guessing it was a V4, but it could have just been a bullfrog. And the V4 over here instead going to be taken down this ore refinery. One more shot or two will definitely be able to go off, and that should completely clean up that ore refinery. That ore refinery will now go down. I just said ore refinery too many times. Point defense drone does wear off, and this army out of Joel's is looking incredibly small and not very mighty in terms of, you know, hey... Look at this, we got Natasha, we got a, actually way more infantry than I was expecting. Instead of going for tanks, he's just going for V4s and lots of infantry, not even dual, not even going for two different uh, barracks. But now production structure did go down, that barracks completely getting taken out, and the Wave Force artillery going to be sniping, not a whole lot, might have been able to take out that single... Uh, might have been able to do damage to that V4 and going to be packing up his MCV again before those satellites come crashing down completely missing and that MCV actually able to get hit by that V4 and Wave Force Artillery actually going to be doing a little bit of sniping up here going to be able to take out that V4 because hey you can shoot through rock which is pretty darn cool and going to be actually be dropping uh, V4 miniature rockets, I actually forget what they're called, on his own units because bears just don't matter. So we should be fighting for equality of the bears and going to be sniping yet another V4. So pretty good sniping, pretty good micro out of Joel's able to take out those V4s little by little and then switching his Tangus over to get into the air and take out one twin blade. But one power plant does go down, one more remains on the water. So is he down to that low power status? where he finally just gets, you know, like, hat, all of the production times double or something absurd like that. And actually, Natasha finally sniping something. I believe this is, like, what, the fourth Natasha able to finally do something in this game. But Joel's getting completely cleaned up here by Tingu. And even the Wave Force artillery will go down. Joel's probably typing something into the chat at this point because he is basically out of this game. No, he still has this expansion over here. Just kidding, it got sold off. I was hoping he could make a comeback like me and just build a million harvesters and despite the fact that harvesters can't shoot air and twin blades would totally shred them, he would still win. One of these games, it will happen, but Joel's going to be getting taken out. Tingu, on the other hand, managing to stay victorious and that is the graph that I wanted to see. Tingu actually going to be winning in that resource race, mostly because Joel's just didn't expand, and that is the kind of breathtaking, inspirational analysis that you come here for. I can tell you the obvious. Going to be a difference of 34,000 resources between these two players, so a pretty clear victory by Tingu, but some impressive micro out, out of Joel's, and Joel's actually being featured quite a bit, so that will probably change after these three games. I hope you enjoyed them. This is Cybert signing out.